You can handle me? Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and we must know there is a power, a certain kind of power you must have in order to be able to defeat a demon, in order to be able to know how to handle demons and get rid of them, get them out of your lives completely. But you must know who you are. Listen to this message. It's going to start off a little slow, but you're going to get where it's going in a minute. God bless you as you listen. Hopefully, you will learn as well. Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We forget who we are in Christ. Sometimes we forget that we are in Christ. But anyway, we'll, we'll leave that alone for right now. That's another message for another day. <laughs> but we forget who we are. And there are many of us in the body of Christ all over this world who are, are emotionally and psychologically bullied by people, by demons, by forces, unseen forces, by all kind of nonsense, even witchcraft, the occult, all kind of stuff. And we don't realize how easily affected we are. And the reason that the bullying is going on in the spirit realm and in the demonic realm is because we don't know who we are. We don't recognize who Jesus really is. A lot of people see him as the man at the door that takes your ticket and lets you in. Or the man at the jailhouse that looks at your ID and says, oh, you got a pardon. You know, you don't have to come here and do time. So we don't realize that there's power in walking with the Lord. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit. So this is, it sounds like it's going to be basic, but it's, it's kind of a heads up because a lot of you do not get the fact that you are endowed with dudamos power. Dudamos comes from, I believe it's the Latin word, correction, Greek word. It, it's another word for power. It, but it also is the word for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when God uh, saves you, when you are forgiven, when you receive his pardon, and after you receive his pardon, you also receive his Holy Spirit. But you also have to ask. He will give you the Holy Spirit if you ask. But the problem is a lot of people are so earthly minded they are no spiritual good and they don't realize that most of this walk is in the spirit realm yes we have to deal with the natural uh, elements of life but the spirit realm is where the true reality takes place that's where the control is going on that's how you can tell i remember when i was going to the salon i could feel that it was going to be one of those days and the demons were going to jump in and out and weave in and out of that salon through different people through their attitudes and i had to be 
aware of it. God made me aware by the scripture he gave me. So when I walked in and the demons started bouncing off the walls through the people and their attitudes, I was already prepared by my God in heaven through the spirit of God, through the word of God, I was prepared. So when I walked in, I already knew not to get upset, not to get caught up in it. Because this was a ruckus that the devils and the demons were trying to stir up. And I could either join the crowd and join the confusion, or I could stay on the outside and not get any mess on me because I'm not getting caught up in it. See, when you're walking with the Lord, you're walking through demonic spirits. They're all over the place. Demonic, I watched uh, the video last night. Um, I, I watch it every time I see it pop up on YouTube because I love the reminders that are in that movie called Divination. And Divination shows you how the angels protect you and the demons are constantly trying to trespass. And remember, if they're anywhere around you, if they're anywhere in your house, if they're anywhere in your dreams, baby, they're trespassing because you are holy ground. See, that's the problem. You don't know that you're holy ground. Some of you are not holy ground because you live and dabble in sin. And anytime you allow sin, you have left the door unlocked and Satan can, and the demons know legally they can come and go as they please. Because you do what you please when you get good and ready. And that gives them the key. You have turned over the authority that God has given you. And that's why some of you get plagued by demonic stuff and temptations and all kind of mess. Because you entertain things that you ought not. <clears throat> so, Part of the problem with the body of Christ is they do not know the power they have. They do not recognize the power. And I'm going to share a few times when the Lord took me through training. I'm going to share that with you. Because if you talk, if you want to talk about countless experiences, I had so many experiences with the demonic realm. I was like, Lord, am I ever going to see an angel? Why am I always battling demons? Well, one day I stumbled on a prayer, and that stopped that. I mean, it's, it's been marvelous since. I love it. Uh, but the training was necessary, and I'm going to share with you two stories on authority. Handling demons. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also share with you the dream where God showed me where I moved up from the level of fearing demons to being annoyed by them. And when you get past the point of fear, they cannot jerk you around anymore. They might try to attack you because that's what demons do. But guess what? They can't harm you. They cannot harm any of us. So we have to remember the power, the power, y'all. See, some of you, if you feel a pain in your chest, the first thing you're going to call is 911. Every time I feel a pain in my chest, I call J-E-S-U-S. -S. Anytime you think you got a stroke coming on, you call 911. I stopped having a stroke by calling J-E-S-U-S. -S. Now, I'm not telling you not to call 911. That's stupid. You better. But what I'm saying is, let the first thing that comes out of your mouth be J-E-S-U-S. Because -S. trust me, he'll get there a whole lot faster than the paramedics because he's already there. He's right there in you. And we forget that. We forget the power we have. Okay, okay, let me share this real quick. Oh, boy. I, I mean, I could spend all day sharing stories. 
of taking authority and seeing the, the, the results. I'll try to make them real quick so I don't wear you down with them for, for time's sake. This will be a real quickie, a real quick way of sharing them because normally I go into deep detail so you get the real picture. My first encounter with a demon was about two weeks or three weeks after I got saved. I was in my bed in a twilight sleep. You can tell when you're in a twilight sleep, there's a total awareness of what's going on around you. You are awake, but you're also asleep. It's the weirdest thing. I can't explain it, but I call it twilight sleep. I was in my bedroom, in my bed, and I knew that something had just come in my house, something evil. I thought in my dream it was human until I realized I could see it, but I could not. I'm watching it move in my in my bedroom and it moves like a man. The, the best way to describe this is the Spider-Man. The Spider-Man, no hair, no, no nothing. But in in this, there was no no physical features on the face, just a shape of the Spider-Man. And he jumps up in the air and lands on me. He pins my shoulders down and my thighs down. And baby cakes, I can't move. Now, some people might call that sleep paralysis, but I can't move in this dream. And this is how I I mean, the Lord showed me after the dream, it was his training. In this dream, I'm battling physically. I'm struggling and I'm scared out of my wits because I don't know who Jesus really is. I don't know his real name. I just know him by his name. You get me? All right. So... I'm struggling, and the more I struggle, the weaker I get. Fast forward to five minutes of struggle. I'm so weak, I can't even talk. Imagine how many people wake up in that state, and they've been touched by a demon, and the person has no idea that all they have to do is mumble Jesus' name. But they don't. They'll say it for other things, but they won't use that name to battle you know, what they're going through because they don't discern that it's a demon. So, <laughs> so here I am scared out of my wits. And finally, after five minutes of battling, I'm so weak, I can't even talk anymore. My speech is unintelligible, except for the fact that I know what I'm trying to say. Doesn't matter, even if you can't make out what you're saying. Satan does when you call that name Jesus. Remember that. So when I called on the name of Jesus, and I was doing it the whole time, after I thought that it was going to kill me, I laid there with tears in my eyes, and I thought, it's got me. I don't have any weapons to fight with. And someone in a very small voice, I didn't know who that was back then. That's how new in the Lord I was. A little small voice said, you've got Jesus. My big mouth, my stupid big mouth said, yeah, that's all I have. I mean, I didn't say it. I'm thinking it because I'm thinking I need a gun. I need a weapon. I need a knife. I need a this. I need a that. And God was showing me all you need as a weapon is Jesus. So. But that was my lesson. I had just, you know, I was a baby Christian. I didn't know. So then I thought about the prayers that the guy said at church. And I'm thinking, okay, it feels like I'm dying here. So I said, okay. Um, in my mouth, this is the way it sounded. This is how weak I was. That's how bad it sounded. 
But I kept saying it over and over and over. Fast forward after about two minutes of saying it again and again and again. Finally, my anger rose up in me, my desperation. And I was, my voice, my speech was getting clearer. My body was getting stronger. Every time I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I said it over and over and over until finally all my strength came back. And I sat up in, in the bed, pushed him off of me and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, it, trust me, I was screaming at that point. I was so desperate. And you know what? Poof, he was gone. He was gone. Now, what I want to share with you is the more you say that name, the more the power will come into you. So if he, if the demon doesn't go at the first utterance, don't give up the, the fight. Oh, no, 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 no. You keep saying it until that demon gets the memo. That's the way you do that. Now, another one real quick. That was my first lesson. I sat up in the bed. I asked the Lord to forgive me because I was already up when I opened my eyes. Because when I screamed, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, I was awake and I was sitting up in my bed. It was a it was spiritual warfare, y'all. And I want you to read Ephesians 6 um, because I want you to know how spiritual warfare works in the demonic realm, how you have to wear the armor of God. It's an, an it's allegorical, but you need to read that to know how to prepare for spiritual warfare. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm flying by it for the sake of time. The next experience I had, fast forward, uh, years later, I dreamt that this woman uh, came in my house. Now, before I share about the woman, I have to share about the threshold. I, I battled demons in fear for years, but I battled them in the name of Jesus. So in spite of my fear, I still did battle. What God showed me in the next dream was that I had moved to another level of spiritual strength and authority. And in that dream, these demons were, I was, I was led to walk through this threshold and these demons started coming from above my head and they were flying down. And it was like three or four of them all over me, scratching and clawing. And I could feel the scratches. And I was so annoyed. I just said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get off of me. Now, what I had just gone through when the attack started was a, a Grecian pillar, those stone, like a stone hedge was like a Grecian pillar. And when I went through that, and I went through the, the demonic battle, um, every time I rebuked them in the name of Jesus, they ran. And when I woke up from that dream, God showed me that, I'm not sharing all the details of the dream for the sake of time. God showed me that in that dream, the reason I felt no fear, but I felt angry, was because I had moved to a new level of authority and a new level of spiritual power. And from that point on, demons would annoy me rather than scare me. Okay. Thank God to this day that has happened. I have not been scared by demons. I hope and pray I never have to be scared by demons because I don't know what other battles the Lord has me to fight. But I pray that unless God has orchestrated the battle, no demons will show up anywhere anymore. All right. So the next thing that happened after that was, this was years later, I had a dream. I'm in the living room. And in my living room, I'm saying these dreams real quick, and I'm going to get back to the point. In the living room, this lady, I see eyes peeping in my living room. Milton's in the recliner, and he's asleep. These eyes are peering at me through my, you know, through the blinds in the in the living room. And I realize there's a bunch of them out there. 
and they're, they're all the size of big, tall men. And I'm like, oh, no. And next thing I know, my door flies open, my front door. And when it opens up, I'm thinking, wait, I locked that. How did that open by itself? And this woman prances into my house with an attitude. And I said, oh, wow, look at this. Now that I'm saying it, you know, it reminds me of the movie last night. The spirit of divination came in a female form. And she was something else to, to deal with, y'all. Okay. So um, anyway, this woman that came in my house, she looked at me, and I'm rebuking her and pointing to my door, telling her to get out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. You're trespassing, blah, 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 blah. And she looked at me with the most arrogant attitude. And she was belligerent as could be. And she said, I'll leave your house when I get good and ready. And I was like, oh my goodness, you got nerve, right? So anyway, so she is standing there and I'm rebuking and rebuking. And then finally, it, there's an instinctive switch that takes place in me. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I know that I need to start praising God. Now, what happens that causes me to do this is my feet raise up off the air. And now I know I have heavenly reinforcements because the wind is whipping in my house the way I would expect a tornado to sound. That's how loud it was. The wind was whipping and nothing in my house was being moved. That's when you know it's a Holy Ghost thing that's going on. If you see fire, but nothing's being burnt, that's a holy fire from God. If you see things move, I mean, if you hear the wind whipping and whipping and whipping, but nothing's moving, you know that's from God. If you see water all over the place and it gets on you, but you're not wet, that's from God. That those are the things you know you're de that God is is communicating something to you. Don't don't look at it in the natural, y'all. You got to open your spiritual eyes. Cuz we have power and you don't realize what what that entails. All right. So, here I am. <clears throat> here I am raising up off the floor by about a foot. And I'm floating in the air with my arms stretched out to my sides in the cross position. And I immediately start praising God at the top of my lungs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this goes on and on and on. And the wind is whipping. And I feel the angels are all around me. It was the most magnificent feeling. Oh, my God. I knew I had backup, y'all. I knew I had reinforcements all around me. And I'm praising God. And the demon, the woman, slams her hands to her ears and says, Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! So I knew it was tormenting her. And I said, I'm going to make this one sorry she ever thought to come near my door. And I will will myself back down on the floor. And walk right up to her. Now, in the natural, you cannot overcome a demon fighting them physically. But I was in the spirit and I had spiritual reinforcements. And the authority and power of God was working in me. Not my power. This was the power of God. And I overpowered her. And I held her by her shoulders and screamed God's praises in her face. For spite. Oh, you can be spiteful with a demon, y'all. So when I got through screaming the praises of God, glorifying God, I said, you don't leave my house until I tell you to leave my house. Because you're going to hear God's praises. And after I tortured her by praising God, then I let go and I said, now go in the name of Jesus and don't you ever return. Boo! She was out like a bat out of you know where. All right. So 
Now, listen, I woke right up. Oh, first I looked over at my baby. Milton was dead asleep, sleeping like a baby. Then I woke up. That dream was so real. It was so real. Oh, my goodness, it was so real, y'all. So what I want to share with you is God is trying to get the church to wake up and get beyond their little fanciful um, uh, church routines and really get into the spirit realm where the real battle is. And if anything is going on, you go to God and you take authority at the same time. Now, this is the reason I don't get attacked like I used to. And I bind all retaliation right now in the name of Jesus. Ain't going to be no attacks going on and jumping off because you think you're going to slip and slide in. No, no, I rebuke those spirits in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke harassing spirits in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke physical spirits of infirmity, of mental infirmity, of spiritual infirmity, of financial poverty. I rebuke danger, harm, and, and threats of any kind in the name of Jesus. Nothing will rise up against me because I cancel every assignment of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. All right. So what I want to share with you is the reason I'm not attacked like I used to be is because of this prayer. And this prayer, I want you to get in the habit of saying it if you have to battle a lot of demons. Now, God may orchestrate it for a while because you have to learn spiritual warfare, but after a while, they will cease and desist and there'll be very few and far between. This is the prayer that stopped it. The last time that made me pray that prayer was when I was in my bed right here in Apple Valley. And I'm looking up at the sky. Not at the sky. <laughs> I'm looking up at the ceiling because I realized I just got waking up. There's a hand over my mouth. And it's reaching up around me from under my bed. And it has its hand over my nose. And the other hand, the left hand, is over my mouth. And they tried to snuff me and suffocate me and muzzle me so I couldn't say the name of Jesus. But I mumbled it. And this is the way I sounded. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I could see the hands, y'all. The hands were fuzzy and nasty looking. They were over my, my face. And I could feel it on my skin and it was creepy feeling. And I, as soon as I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, it was gone. I didn't have to struggle. I didn't have to fear. I was like, okay, you out of here. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That took care of that. That ended that. So what I want to share with you is always know the power that's in you. What God was showing me in the first battle, and I want to share with you, the power that's in the name of Jesus has more power than a bullet. The power that's in the name of Jesus has more power than a tornado. The power that's in the name of Jesus has more power than in a pack of dogs during mating season. And you've heard that story over and over again about how they all charge me and I hollered, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And years ago when I used to cuss, it didn't stop them. But when I bound them in the name of Jesus, they stopped dead in their tracks. And they looked confused. And they looked like they were no longer aware that I was in their midst. And that experience explained the scripture that talked about how they wanted to throw Jesus off the cliff. And he walked through them. And nobody touched him. I realized because they didn't see him anymore. He became invisible. So what I want to share with you, you got a power working on your side when you work with the Lord that trumps any power you can buy at the store, any incantation, any mess that they try to put on you. No, they can't. If you ever get the chance to watch the movie Divination, you watch it. 
because when the man was fearful, the demons were coming in like hordes. The wife hooked up with this woman and they, she allowed her to do witchcraft in her house. And before you know it, because she was an ignorant Christian, like many of you are. And you think you can play with crystals and candles and incantations and tarot cards and psychic hotline reading. And you can go into all this stuff and think it's okay. No. You are touching the unclean thing. And when you play with cursed items, you open the door. It's like you're having a party and everybody's welcome, including the demons. No, you have to know who you are in Christ and you have to know who the demons are in Christ. And you have to know to battle them. You don't just let things happen because you're used to people rolling over you and pushing you over and, and manipulating you and controlling you and forcing you to do what you don't want to do and intimidating you. No, intimidation comes from fear, y'all. Oh. Know who your Jesus is. It was by his own power that when he he allowed his own creation to whip him and nail him to the cross. By his own power, three days later, he rose from the dead. By his own power, he ascended up into heaven. Baby cakes, Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Why are you rolling over and playing dead? Why are you rolling over and allowing the devil to do whatever he wills in your life? Why are you yielding your authority over to the demonic realm? You forget you serve the creator, not the created. So act like it. Act like a child of the most high king and stop wimping out every time you hear something go bump in the night. All right, now that I got through slapping you upside the head <laughs> with my big New York voice, <laughs> I ask you to read Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to leave you with that for the sake of time. We're cutting the service short today. And if God leads, I will continue with knowing how to do spiritual warfare next week. And I might even ask some of my members to pick a part of that to share so that we can all take part in teaching each other in the body of Christ, the authority we have in the name of Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Three weapons and I'm going to stop. Four weapons, I'm going to stop. Prayer, praise, the name of Jesus, the word of God. <laughs> and let me also add one of the most important ones. Obedience. If you resist the devil, he will flee. Some of y'all want God to do all the fighting for you. No, baby, you got to engage your will. You can't just say, well, God didn't stop my hand from doing that and from going there and from driving to the jute joint and driving to the strip joint and driving. He didn't stop me from, from, uh, from shooting it up. No. You have to stop yourself. You have to have enough chutzpah to resist the devil. And while you're resisting the devil with your will, resist him in the spirit realm by the name of Jesus, the word of God, praising God. Remember, remember these words the next time you get in battle. Amen. All right. God bless you.